All right. Well, um, I wasn't going to work necessarily on the video co-op idea unless people were interested. Well, people were interested, and one very, very uh, kind person offered to donate $120 to start it, uh, which at my original estimates were 10 people, your subscriptions, which he wanted me to give out. Okay, so uh, I did work on it. And yesterday, instead of putting some features in this interface pro, uh, to current video sites, I research, I spent hours and hours, and I already have been over the last week, um, but I did the actual number crunching. And there's a big gotcha to the idea. Um, so this is serving a dual purpose, uh, uh, just to share my research and see what exactly you were being provided here. It was kind of an eye-opener a little bit. All right, I searched for a good server. Now this is a medium priced or even premium in the sense that they're very well known, big company. They have fantastic applications. You can use their server and their free applications to do automatic, you know, quick recording upload. You can make chat applications. They have source code for all of them. Um, these apps, there's a Skype type thing you can use. None of the uh, stick em kind of things are even conceivable because then each person is using a tremendous amount of streams. You're using one stream to upload your video and then one stream per person you're downloading. Uh, it gets pretty, uh, pretty hectic pretty quick. Okay, so uh, this is sort of a typical um, thing you can find out there. As I say, they're definitely more bargain basement, but you'd have to build more of your own stuff. And um, in terms of taking a low-hanging fruit, uh, this is a good site. And you do see if they even mention the connections, which often they don't, uh, you can see 100 connections supported for $100 and so on. These are the shared servers, by the way. These are non... Uh, dedicated servers, they're shared servers, so your your videos are being served off of somebody else's, I mean a machine that's serving other people's videos. But it turns out that's a misleading number, and I knew I would have to double check this, and that also I'd want to check it so I could go back to the sites that don't limit connections, but just tell you these other statistics. The, the amount of disk space you have to store videos the bandwidth transfer you can do a month, you know, you can download 10 gigabytes of video a month, $20 package. And the peak bandwidth, which um, took me a while to figure out, this is not a shared peak bandwidth, they're talking about the highest encoding that is supported. So you can't do very, you know, you can't have good sports footage at one mega BPS. You're going to want two or three or something. Alright, so the intro count there is 20 connections, 2 gigabytes of storage space, that's the space on the server to store these videos. That's the stickler, that's the problem. 2 gigabytes? What the fuck? You could buy a terabyte for 70 bucks now, but uh, I believe if I look into this deeper I'm going to find out that these media servers um, use, you know, redundant high-performance disks, and they're very expensive. The bandwidth transfer, which is how much, again, per month, and then this peak bandwidth. Um, uh, there is a good link uh, to uh, figure out how much you're going to use in bandwidth. So this is a, a, a modest basic quality video appropriate for debate. And you come out to 117 kilobaud. Uh, if you have the same kind of thing but better resolution, that last one was 320 by um, 240. You, you double those. That's still a frame rate of 15 frames per second. You're already up, you know, tripled. 
Uh, you just uh, you want to have a better resolution and frame rate. Okay, uh, pentupled almost. Or let's see, is it pentupled? Yeah, it is pentupled. And just for uh, comparison, this is like a really good video that you uh, that you know music and lots of high speed action, and you're talking uh, 1700 kilobaud. Okay, so the custom intro account is a little bit different uh, because you can change the connections down to 10 and the disk space up to 5. Okay, so because my goal was to create something that 10 people could use and be able to see each other's videos for a dollar a month. Other people would be on their own. If they wanted to see the video, they could pay. I figure, well, if you get a group of 10 people in conversation, if they're having good conversations, then people will, members will pay to watch. And those are the good members, uh, conceivably, in that they're not using the uploading bandwidth or doing something stupid like uploading in a really fat uh, file that has to be encoded down to a small file and using up your bandwidth limit. They're not as dangerous. Uh, you don't have to worry about them as much. A dollar from them would help more other people be able to watch the video. So I moved it down to 10 connections and gave us disk space because, you know, two gigabytes of disk space is just, it's, it's ridiculously low. And that is still $21 a month, that trade-off. I could lower the bandwidth uh, that takes off about a dollar. I think I got it down to $18 when I did that. Okay, so that makes for some numbers. Okay, at that bit rate, uh, which is modest, the size of a 10 minute video is gonna be about eight megabytes. It'll be a little smaller, probably 15%, 10% smaller or something, but that's the full video size. The minutes per month that you get out of this is 11,000 minutes per month. Uh, if you divide that by 10 users, 30 days a month, you get about 40 minutes per day. Okay, so this is where the thing is, starts to struggle. But buying higher bandwidth transfer is not that expensive. It had a couple dollars, or well, I'll go into it, it, it all adds up the stuff you need, but this is the, the main problem. See, what I need per day is, um, well, I'll go on the next slide, it'll say some of that. So the number of 10 minute videos per month that could be streamed, uh, 11, uh, you know, almost 1,200. Now, the number of minutes you can have on disk, a mere 6,000 minutes total, period. Okay, so that means a total of 597 videos. Okay, that presents a problem. I went through some users, Greatex, Conference Report, Piero, Barklord, Spook, and MNDM, and I looked at what they make per day. Of course, anybody that deletes video, Spook, 21 videos, are you kidding me? Anybody that deletes videos would be very welcome on this service, because it turns out the stupid disk space, two gigabytes of disk space, more bandwidth than disk space, really. It's amazing, and it continues to be worse. It's like that for every server. As I said, the media servers must need some expensive disk technology. Ridiculous. Terabytes, like, you know, 100 bucks easy. Decent terabyte. Oh, but streaming has requirements, I guess. Okay, so if you see on there, there's a, a spread of uh, usage for people that have been here four or five years. Um... A habit like gray text would work with these numbers. Also, if somebody made shorter videos, right? These are 10 minute videos. I said 610 minute videos, you know, so that's 1,200 five minute videos. Um, someone like Conference Sport is going in the other direction. He is, yeah, probably somebody that's gonna use above, above the average. But the thing is, all of us, with the exception of to spook according to its total number of videos are relatively heavy users um, of the system right so yeah 
YouTube's not making money off of us, probably. Uh, sad fact. They're making money off of videos because the storage is this is the is the bottleneck here, the price bottleneck. It's clear you want uh, all of these servers are they're not set up for people using video to talk to each other at all. They're set up to have a video with a lot more people watching it than than make videos. A lot more people watching. So these services you could see, you know, this like I can only have 2 gigabyte of space, but I could stream 10 gigabytes, you know. I mean, two gigabytes, period, for five years. Two gigabytes, maxed out. Ten people, that's 59 videos each. And we're making, you know, 300 videos a day, plus or minus 50%. I mean, a year, plus or minus 50%. And there's a lot of cross-communication. Also, this comes down to 40 minutes a day, right? Uh, so, you know, I need to have more than that. We need to have, like, at least three times that just to see each other's videos. If everybody's making one video a day, then you need 10 minutes to upload it. Doesn't, doesn't matter how long it takes. It's the, you know, the minute length of the video. It's going to cost you 10 minutes to upload it, and then an hour and a half to see the other nine members' videos that they made that day. You know, just to figure out a way to come up with some statistics. 48 minutes isn't going to do it. Right? That's that's 100 minutes. So you have to double at least your bandwidth transfer to 20 gigabyte for 10 people. So, um... So here is what we would really need for uh, to serve uh, a group of 10 people of long-term internet conversance uh, and be able to store their videos for a year um, and for them to all be able to watch each other's videos. And if they didn't, if they didn't use all their time, someone else could pick that up. It's, it's slim pickings. It's $59 a month. So that means it'd be $6 a month for people to do this. Well, that, that's in the range of the, the, the Vimeo and stuff, isn't it? I mean, they're giving you a hell of a service, it turns out. Dedicated servers are where you get the whole machine to yourself. It's a little uh, still more um, wholesale. But look, so, so you get this, this smallest machine for 600, so that's supposedly 600 users. And you get, you know, great network speed, tons of streams, tons of data, 1,000 gigabytes of data transfer, and you get a 100 gigabyte hard drive? That's almost, that's about, okay, it's about, well, anyway, that's about how much we want for, for 10 users. So, uh, the disc price remains a huge bottleneck, even if you, when you step up to the next level of uh, economy of scale and, and get your own dedicated machine set up. Now, of course, this is a server that makes money on this, but this means if we were going to go in there ourselves and try to put a machine somewhere and do all of the maintenance, the full-time work and, you know, IT of keeping it running when it just breaks for whatever reason, you know, it's going to be hundreds of dollars to do something like that, plus you buy the machine and everything else. So I ran into their machine based on how my YouTube channel works. I figure if I have sometimes 300 views, I'd want around 30 connections, and the number of connections isn't that expensive either, so that's enough connections probably for people, a couple hundred people to watch my video, though it means sometimes you try to watch it and there's already people watching it. But it's pretty similar. I would need 5 gigabytes of space for a year's worth of 
my own videos and every year that would go up by five dollars when I needed another five gigabytes I need a hundred gigabytes of bandwidth transfer for everybody to be that watches my videos now to be able to watch them I mean I overestimated these to make sure I didn't get it underestimated and I cranked down the bandwidth because yeah I don't need better than 512 myself so that's eighty dollars a month so that means that you that that's what I've been doing for years so that means YouTube is providing me a service that if I just want to make my own website old school and I happen to have videos and I had a video blog on it like it was my own blog that would cost me eighty dollars a month so if YouTube's giving you a service for eighty dollars a month and there's always been rumors and I've heard industry-wise that YouTube isn't making money and I could see why there's no way around that storage issue then I could see why now if I have my own computer to build this I think there is a, a, a solution because if you have a really high speed disk that's needed for streaming servers well they don't have to be stored there right it's a high performance disk you could put your terabytes of videos off on the side on slower disks and if somebody tries to get a video that's in the archive you move it to the fast disk they wait a couple seconds extra for their video and then they get it maybe YouTube's doing something like that or with a distributed architecture but the fact of the matter is that if you wanted to go a little bit lower level than a finished website to the kind of people that pr provide the iron for this stuff semi package right like with software so you have a player right away you don't have to just build it yourself you know a little bit more features uh, than a hard drive but really they're serving the fact that it performs you know as a data retrieval uh, mechanism then yeah a solid medium price is eighty dollars a month now for really cheap for definitely a dollar less than a dollar a month we could have I mean because if you didn't want to seek be able to seek to the middle of a video if, if you were okay with you wait for the video to load if you want to skip to the middle of the video you wait for it to load that far if you're okay with that uh, then yeah you can have unlimited uh, transfer and posts and stuff though if you really use it for that you might find that they complain later that they were making a guess you wouldn't do that much transfer but regular websites storage is basically free they don't put a cap on you practically in a lot of the places and bandwidth that's how cheap those have gotten so I was surprised to see that um, that storage wasn't cheap I expected at these rates to be paying for the for the transfer um, but yeah no. so basically the short story is the first thing uh, when I was seeing these people, these sites saying they could support 10 simultaneous users, I was thinking 10 simultaneous users as in 10 members to this thing. But they mean one producer with an audience of 10, a simultaneous audience of 10, which to me is probably an audience of 100, roughly, you know, maybe an audience of 70, depending on if those people want to see the video at the same time. You know, if everything was statistically spread out, the people are all in different time zones and stuff. You could have, you know, 10 connections supporting 100 regular viewers, and usually there's just happens to be a connection free. And that's the model. If 10 people are producing videos, there's not enough disk space. All right, to summarize. So the experiment was a failure uh, in that it's not really workable. You could see from that, if you followed it, that what I want, what I wanted was a video site where we could store our videos, a bunch of conversants that would be members, and be able to see each other's videos there, and that would all be covered. In terms of massive numbers of people watching them, they could either become members and watch them at my site, or using these APIs I've been using, we could upload them, you know, for members that had a Vimeo and a YouTube account, it could automatically upload to those sites as well. And that's where the mass audience could be. But, and when one of those people 
were to delete your videos, you not only still have them like on a hard drive, but they're still available. They'd be at the mirror sites already. They'd be at our site already. And if somebody really wanted to, they could become a member and see them. And just the whole framing would be much more of the sort that, you know, whoever had deleted your video was to blame. Okay. Um, but I don't want to pay $10 a month for that and do all that work. That wasn't, it's supposed to be a low hanging fruit. It's not because of the storage costs, which frankly, I mean, it vindicates YouTube a bit. YouTube is maybe being more open-minded than a lot of companies like your Comcast and Viacoms uh, often are about these sorts of issues. Uh, they might just be looking the other way an awful lot uh, compared to the fact that they need to recoup from 10 to $50 a month for people like $80 a month for people like us. I mean, they're making money off people just watching the videos. All of those people, a million people watching one five minute video, that five minute video is just using, you know, four megs of storage space and the bandwidth is cheap. So, yeah, so maybe there's a reason it's not built for what we do, because maybe the, the social value is just not linked up with the economic value in this case. Um, so, I, and if somebody wants to run the numbers and show me different, uh, they can show me. There's some, I found some content delivery networks that charge like, a hundred bucks per terabyte and you only pay for what's streamed and it's like uh, what is it there's a couple dollars per gigabyte storage and I couldn't figure out if that's just the storage cost or if it is a monthly thing um, I didn't like the way the numbers were going I don't particularly want that kind of, of network um, there was a uh, G1981C has been talking about how lame this idea was. Um, not for this particular reason, but just in general, that the cheapest way, the best way is to distribute a network. But people aren't running, you know, like a LimeWire thing for videos. But people aren't doing that, and they have to r leave it running all day. And the bursting would cause all the local networks possibly to get in on complaining about that if it was something that was ubiquitous. Um, but, but even though that's a good technical solution, we're just, that's, that's like a movement, getting people to run this stuff when they can go to a website and there's only a few of us that need this security and this kind of other issue. So I just, it's not something I'm gonna pursue a stand, because I don't wanna rebuild that network. And I'm gonna go on to the other way to secure freedom. As long as there's commercial companies that are trying to provide this stuff for free and or low cost, and I mean the high level ones like YouTube or Vimeo or Blip or whatever, um, there's this amount of security in just using a centralized interface to all of those services. So you can reply to a video at another service and you can uh, move your videos around. You know, if, if YouTube deletes your video and you, you re-upload it at Vimeo, you could go to my interface, it's you own that video, you can say, look, there's a mirror here. And the conversation ha happening at the central place, you know, if some of those links are broken, fine. You, they haven't kicked, you know, when you get kicked off of YouTube and that, and you, that's PMing other people is how you're communicating about your philosophy or your plans together to discuss or work on something, then they have collapsed that whole thing. So I'm just going to go back to the website I'm working on and the idea uh, of getting free of that by using the whole market so it can compete. The idea of, adding a co-op version in that market, it's not gonna happen at a dollar a month. I was wrong. It would for us be more like $10 a month. And, um, and yeah, I, I'm not, I don't wanna start that. So uh, live and learn and perhaps uh, find some reasons to, to be thankful. Uh, realize, I guess, what the value of this service is uh, in the sense of if we had to pay for it. I really like discussing philosophy online, 
but I wouldn't pay eighty dollars a month to do it. And um, and if I paid ten dollars a month, I wouldn't have as many people able to watch the videos as are now because YouTube somehow thinks they can or has figured out a way to make money. 